I line up my shots very randomly, I mean clearly, but I gotta say I kind of like it when like there's a little boogie peekaboo here. <laughs> Hello everybody, I'm Roxy, this is Chaotic Beautiful File, and today we're going to talk about... I should have taken out the book first, shouldn't I? The Kreutzer Sonata by Lev Tolstoy. Now, this is an edition in Spanish, was translated by Gonzalo Guillén Monge, but I am going to list a couple of editions down below. I don't know who has translated it, but I presume Constance Garnett will have one, and probably maybe Richard Pivier and... Larissa Volokonsky. Yeah, I will list a couple of editions that I find. This was my pick for the month of January for the Overdue Book Club. So we are not caught up just yet, but we're, we're just getting there. Right after this, I'm going to be recording the one for February. So fingers crossed, we are getting there. This is my third full Tolstoy, plus I've read some of his essays and some of his short stories and I generally love how he writes. I uh, did not really love this so in case you haven't read this and you just want to hear the review. We start this book in a train and there are these people talking about love and what true love is. Amongst these people are men and one woman and the woman is portrayed as this silly confused creature who is really trusting about love but like her vision is shallow unlimited and it gets rebuffed and although i hate the gender politics involved in that i do have to say that i love the socratic element he also does this in war and peace and anna karenina and there's just people exchanging ideas but with Tolstoy, because of the way he writes it, it never feels like too forced. Personally, I really enjoyed engaging with the ideas. Before we move on, yes, the change. I uh, got hot, which is weird to say. Also, the heating isn't on. In Anna Karina, for example, that feels much better because there's Lev talking to other men. He doesn't get cast as the ignorant one. And similarly, in War and Peace, there's a lot of discussion being among women and then men. And I don't mean to say that all discussions in literature need to be separated by sex. What I meant is that in this situation, in this particular scene, you do get the sense that, oh, women are so silly with their ideas about love and men are wise and know better, which is ironic given what happens then, which is that this a uh, guy, the protagonist, arguably comes in and starts telling his story of love and madness. He opens by saying he has killed his wife, so it's not a spoiler or anything, and sort of we go into his rationale and this convoluted marriage story. It's not, it must be said, just about love, it's also a look into marriage as an institution, and how best I would describe this is Lev Tolstoy arriving at the wrong conclusions after great premises. There is no other way, because he observes, for example, how unfair and negative the subservient role of women in the home is, and he appreciates the labor there. But his conclusion of that is that, well, since that is the case, women have learned to take advantage of their body, which is not wrong, but instead of indicting that and indicting the society that made women do that, he sort of turns onto sex and frames women as temptresses, which is just odd. I think you could twisted to make it seem like no 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 Tolstoy is just like diagnosing stuff and I'll get to that in the discussion section but I think the way the book is structured and told just doesn't grant that so to make a long story short I enjoyed parts of this I don't think it's the best entry point to Tolstoy and I don't think it is the best Tolstoy out there first of all I was not a big fan of the framed narration. I thought this was going to be the action playing out, so I thought it was going to be this love triangle, but it's this guy retelling the love triangle, which is not as exciting, especially considering Tolstoy being so good at nuance and subtlety, but here all of that is eliminated because we have a first-person narrator. Even the frame device, it's first-person, and I'm not saying I would never be interested in reading Tolstoy in first-person, but 
Because of the nature of the story, it was a disappointment. Sarah Wheeler in Modern Stars does say that this is his most misogynistic work. And not having read much more by him, I would have to agree. Like, it's so hard to see how this is the same author of Anna Karenina in many ways. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. If you haven't read the book, I would not recommend it. I think this is the first book in the book club that I've been like... I still did enjoy the first part, I would say, because the discussions themselves were very interesting. And again, I like how Tolstoy writes, so the way he wrote them was very interesting to me. But it goes off the rails after that. The narration is not that compelling because of this narrative device. We are asked to align ourselves with this repenting killer and it does not work. That is all uh, what I have to say without like more spoilers. I mean, it does provide like a good insight into Tolstoy's philosophy, especially in regards to the place of marriage in society and ideas of desire and control and self-control and like moral control. But the way it is expressed, it's, it's pretty dismal. Now, moving into the section with spoilers, I just think that it doesn't work that this guy is repenting because in the end, he's not punished, not really. The section when he talks about like how draining having kids was on his wife, and when he talks about doctors and this modern paranoia about like something's going to happen with the baby, I think actually that part is super, super modern. There is a fine line between beware over medicalization and anti vaxxer. <laughs> So we do have to like straddle that line carefully, but I do think like the general idea of like being overbearing and like being scrutinized by society in maternity and parenthood is so real and I was surprised to see it here. So I liked that observation. But then again, the conclusions he draws from that are ridiculous and they're like, it's all women's fault. I just realized I'm magic the way he faults the woman for the murder and we never get her voice not really and i think that is a big problem if this had been again third person or if it had been another character telling the story i'm not saying the woman i'm not saying like cheating is okay but the trade of cheating killing is kind of a bit drastic i would say and he gets off unscathed and by the end he clearly tolstoy doesn't want us to hate this guy because it's He's analytical, he's temperate, he is generous towards his wife in a way, like within the logic of the book. When she has the spirit of like self-renaissance, like right before the affair, if I recall correctly, or like during the affair, he talks about like how gorgeous she looks and how full of energy. But then that is immediately twisted into the negative. Women can't win. Also, we get another taste of Tolstoy's views with music, the Kreutzer Sonata is something that you cannot like just listen to, like it overtakes you completely, which is again a good sentiment, like I like the power of music, but then he's like, this is bad, no to all pleasure, and I understand this is rooted in his own personal and social philosophy, of which I don't know a lot, but I've read a little bit, and it's not great. In terms of what this means for a work of fiction, for a literary work, it's just dry and it makes it very very flat. Philosophical digressions, yes, but narrative and narrative choices and narrative viewpoint, it was just anticlimactic, flat characters and sexist. We reviewed this by the way for Pluma Pantallas, so I did make notes. So this is an edition in Spanish as I said, so I can't like read it out loud, but I had written down page number where he talks about like women as being slaves to the home and I was screaming at Tulsa like yes, yes, you're on the right track. And then he goes on to do an indictment of like materialism and consumerism. Whoa, this is so visionary. And like, we've been having these troubles for centuries now. And he talks about like the materialist corruption with which we have polluted the world, but then dot 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 through the women. <laughs> I understand what he's saying because a lot of the industry and a lot of like the domestic fears and a lot of consumerism is targeted towards women even now and historically that has been the case but instead of examining that as well maybe there is a reason what does this mean for a woman to like have to be the slave of the home and what does it mean for her to have only this as her medium of expression and creativity and power nah man <laughs> 
women. <laughs> Very frustrating. Right there at the cusp of a really insightful critique. So thematically it was already challenging but again there are some discussion points that I found interesting. It's not all lost but the conclusions were less than savory, let's just say. <laughs> Again, just in terms of pure story, I just think the frame device took every bit of tension because we don't know what was going through this woman's head and the tension towards the affair couldn't be built. Especially because he confesses right at the beginning. And when that happens, there's gotta be something else to build the momentum and I just don't think there was anything there. I don't know how to evaluate this. Is this like a three star where like some aspects were four stars and then some aspects were like 1.5 so we even it out? I don't know. But now that I'm talking about it, I'm glad that I read it. It's an interesting book to consider and dissect, but yeah, not my favorite Tolstoy. Actually, it prompted me to take a break from Tolstoy. Like I read his main works now, including Death of Ivan Illich, so I'm good, I'm gonna go read some other Russians for now. That's it. If you read this book, either now for the book club, thank you very much for joining, or before, leave your comments, what's your take on it, I'm very curious. Or if you haven't, just let me know, does this book sound good? Although after this review, I doubt it. Or maybe it does, maybe you are interested in seeing for yourself. Let me know all thoughts down below. I will leave the March announcement down below so you can check that out and join for that. See you next time. People and... Or if you have... <clears throat> Anyways, as I was saying,